call the meeting to order. Um, so, Joanne, do you have the roll call? I have roll call. All right. Right. Fantastic. Uh, we have Sheila here uh, for public invited to be heard. Would you like to make any comments or no comments? Except okay. I'm sorry to be losing such a fine direction. So thank you. Just when I. Yes, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. I'm excited and sad to be here. It's a, it's a wonderful venue. It is. It's that. Okay. Did everyone have an opportunity to take a look at the minutes that Joanne sent out? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Katie, is there a second? Thank you. Uh, all in favor? No, oh, that is unanimous. Sorry, I didn't catch the second. Second, thank you, Gallon and Kelly. All right, perfect. Uh, we'll turn it over to Eric for the February the second. Sorry, it was not organized enough to get it up on the screen today, but we only have two exceptions. Uh, so if you have your uh, uh, printout, or I can just fold it up, the first one is a political postcard. Um, she has no third term, win with Bilkey. So this is from the 1940 presidential election. Uh, we don't have a lot on that. So, um, even though this doesn't have a direct long lot link, it uh, seems like something we would fill out our uh, mid 20th century political memorabilia. Um, I will note I didn't leave a bit of description talking about a video that was from a previous session, so I can ignore that. Um, but it's basically connected as a, but as a representative of the 1940 presidential election. Next item uh, is this, uh, it's a cyanotype, which is a blue the process used to make blueprints. Uh, the actual fabric is about yay by yay, and it was used to print photographs as well. So this is on fabric, you know, photographs of historic Longmont buildings. Uh, it is a fountain collection. Uh, accession. Um, it has been in the museum's possession uh, for at least 20 years, but we weren't able to track down any uh, documentation prior to that. So uh, uh, it uh, will be noted that this is found in collection. And if someday someone comes in with a loan paper that says, I loaned that to the museum in 1972, then but hopefully you think it's pretty unlikely. Uh, so this is kind of a cool piece because it does have some photographs that uh, we didn't have previously in the accession collection. It's kind of a uh, cool fabric photo document. Any questions on either of those accessions? Are there any clues as to how old the the second one is the sino. Um, based on the photographs, what buildings are, are shown, um, it's between 1906 and 1921. The, uh, the photo of City Hall is a city hall that was torn down in 1921, and there's a photo of uh, Columbine Elementary, which was built in 1906. So between those two uh, lines, uh, probably toward earlier. So did this, was it found in the process of cataloging everything that you, that you guys have been doing, like all of the cataloging you've been doing? It's actually been sitting on a shelf in the archives for most of that time. Oh. <laughs> and it was, you know, we had very few accessions in January, and it's like, you know, I wonder if we've got anything in like the founding collection. And I went over and, oh yeah, there's this cool cyanotype fabric. I think we need to, uh, you know, dig into and so you know, verify that, yeah, we didn't have really any other 
documentation on it. So maybe uh, yeah, that is the exception. Any other questions? All right. Is there a motion to approve the concession? I move that we approve the two exceptions proposed. Is there anyone like second? Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? That is unanimous. Fantastic. All right. Uh, we can move on to reports. So I will turn it over to Kim for the report of the museum director for the last time. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I would say it's been a real pleasure working with all of you. I'm going to miss you so very, very much. You are wonderful. Um, and maybe the case that tomorrow we'll learn more about what's happening with the surveys that have uh, went out for what is potentially a tax that will be put on the ballot in November. Um, there will be reports to city council about what the results of the surveys have been, and then the city council will give recommendations about um, what to do what will be included, if anything's going to be put on the ballot, and more importantly for you all, kind of what your role will be in all of it. Um, because I know that a lot of the advisory boards have been asking questions about, you know, what can they say, who can they talk to, what is the messaging around it, so on and so forth. So we will get more guidance tomorrow um, at that city council meeting, and Eric and I will be in conversation about um, what it'll mean for, for all of you because um, certainly if we are put on the ballot, you all may get questions and you may want to talk to friends and voters and so on and so forth. So we'll be sure that you've got some talking points, I think, how those responsibilities of that. Um, and that One other thing that doesn't appear on here is that we will be, uh, for the capital campaign uh, for the museum expansion, um, we're working with an organization called Prismatic Consulting. Oh, we've got another attendee. Hi, Susie. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? We were just talking about what to expect at tomorrow's council meeting okay. with um, the results of the survey. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. what, what happens. Um, the other thing I was just starting to say is that the we the friends of the Longmont Museum have paid for a consultant um, to help us with the capital campaign. And so that is going to be launching probably in May. And um, the consultant that we're working with is really helping pull together talking points and um, sort of messaging around the capital campaign. Um, and that's, that'll move forward regardless of what happens with the ballot initiative. Um, the idea is that we would eventually, assuming that the ballot measure goes forward, we would extract the capital expenses from that um, for the museum expansion, and that the only thing that would go on the ballot would be um, operating expenses required for the museum. Um, and so that's you know twenty million dollars that we would be pulling off the, the, the price tag of all of that. So, um, uh, and our consultant has been really, really optimistic about the potential for being able to raise the money for it. And part of the reason is that we've got so many things to be excited about. You know, we've got the children's room, we've got the um, expanded outdoor areas, we've got um, the uh, rooftop space, we've got the cafe, we've got an expanded gift shop, but you know, like all of these things that a lot of different people will be attracted to. Um, and they, given that they're just like this is this is a fundraiser's dream, you know, to be able to have all of these different things to, to sell, basically. Um, so they're really really optimistic about being able to, to um, have a successful capital campaign. Um, and so we'll make sure that you guys get those talking points and are able to, to sort of share with your friends and, and networks. Um, so 
the, all the things we've got to offer. So, with that in mind, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, what we've got going, and part of the thing that I've shared um, in the report is that um, we've already got, so out of that $20 million, um, don't trust my math here, but out of that $20 million, we've already raised five, definitely. We've got a grant out for another one. Um, and then at the last city council meeting, there were two things here. I just on vacation, so don't trust me here. But whenever that happened, um, the city council also awarded the museum some oil and gas proceeds, and so that we don't know the exact number yet, but that's estimated between eight hundred thousand and one point two million. And so we've already got a good chunk of money raised for that already, um, and I think with that momentum plus all of these other sort of you know positive things that we can work off of, we've really got a great chance of raising the money for it, and. We've got it lined up in a way that works really well too because we'll be building in phases. And so the first phase basically is already funded. The second phase is pretty darn close. And then, you know, we can kind of take our time with phase three. And so given time, the exciting things we can sell and the momentum that we've got going, I think we've got a really, really strong path. So that's why I share. I wanted to share this all with you. This is the latest hot off the presses design um, that I am super, super excited about. I, um, you know, I feel like our architect has listened to us um, really carefully, and she has um, created spaces and you know um, adjacencies and. Um, Various ways that we can do things like that. And it's tiny, so I'm sorry for the, the tiny print on it. Um, the, for instance, from the entrance of the museum, all the things that are available for free access are all right up there at the, at the front of the entrance. Um, so, for instance, the local art and community gallery, that'll be um, available for free as people enter. And the cafe will be available for you for people to enter. Um, and then as you get deeper into the museum, um, you'll, those are paid areas. So we'll be able to kind of um, uh, control the access um, from the front, front desk perspective. Um, you see we've got the cafe, we've got an expanded gift shop, we've got the new children's gallery, we'll have a new front range rising gallery. Um, and then new spaces for an artist studio, for an art, artist in residence program, a much more um, expansive uh, rotating flex gallery space. Um, if you can see the, the collections gallery there, um, that basically be able to um, have you know, sort of uh, history exhibitions that really focus on our collections and be able to bring out collections. Um, that you know, as as you all know, you know, we've got a lot of stuff in the collections that we don't get a lot of opportunity to bring out. So that'll be just another opportunity to, to show the collections that, that you guys are you know approve all the time. And so being able to see some of those things actually come out for people to enjoy um, will be really amazing. And then on the other side, you see, um, and this is this is just a first pass. At what the um, elevations will look like from the outside, um, but I think even seeing it in this rendering, um, it, it excites me to see how she can create um, those really interesting angles and the windows and the different um, materiality and all of that. I, I just I get super excited about seeing it in this rendering. So. Um, it, this is again it's just the first pass, and we're still that's why Eric and I were late. So we were waiting with some contractors to look at the very first thing that we're going to do, which is the new um, textile storage. You know, that we're renovating that space that has become the clean um, area for exhibitions construction. So the um, graphics and the labels and all of that are going to be um, moved up to that space, and then there'll be office spaces for. Uh, Jared and his team and our public places are going to go. 
of this. So I think you will be able to spread out, especially as we bring on new staff. Who's the architect? It's called the Senza Architects, and the um, principal architect that we're working with is Krista Plaza. Are they out of Bolton? They are out of Louisville, correct? Louisville, yeah. And they're an on call architect, so they've got to be right in word. And I have to say, they've been really, really great to work with. Um, I think I was a little nervous because their specialty is like recreation centers. Um, but I just feel like she's listened to us really, really intently. And I think this design is, is fantastic. And she is bringing on an architect whose specialty is museums. Um, who will act as a, just a peer reviewer. Um, so we will be doing you know, sort of the nitty gritty work that we will be able to have a consultant um, that, that knows museums and the needs of museums. So even that aspect is, I think, really um, pressure from, from her perspective. She didn't have to do that, but just through the grapevine, she was like, you know, there's this local expert and we should put her on board. So that's, that's it. I have one more question. Yeah, of course. Sure. Um, presuming this gets developed and looks like it will, uh, what's the, how do you, the two of you see the vision stacking levels? We'll definitely need to increase staff, and I think that ultimately <coughs> it's just going to be uh, creative thinking and um, at, you know, requesting through the city budgeting process. Um, I did some math recently, and I think during my tenure, we've asked, we've been able to add something like six FTE, and that's been essentially outside of the city budgeting process. Um, so it's possible, and I think that it just it requires just creating. Um, and so, it, while it feels like it's really challenging to get staff, um, I, I think that that with some some thought that can happen about. Are they in phase of position? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, the thing is that we'll be able to also kind of scale our work accordingly. Um, because I think that we can, with new, even with these spaces, we can be essentially status quo for a while, and then be able to, as we um, uh, as we can have staff, then we can expand. So I think that this will just give us the ability to be able to do what we do better, and then as we have staff, we can get even better than that. Yeah. So I think there's. There's some, some staff growth that we really want to be able to, to accomplish. Um, but even without that, we need to do some darker work. Good question. <coughs> Something I need. Well, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I was on the museum board when we started out that little garage across the library. It's a very good garage. So this is, this is really a uh, great to see. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Well, I and mean, that's ultimately what it boils down to is that we've got a lot of demand and yeah. we can't do it right now. You know, right. Um, and part of it is staff, as you point out, and part of it is just the building confines. You know, so this will give us an opportunity to, to do what we can to do that. We've got the wait list all over the place. So, Clearly, people like what we're doing, and it makes me really sad to leave right now. You know, <laughs> there's exciting things on the horizon. So yeah. Um, so I wanted to kind of point those out. Those were things that happened sort of after we were able to put the the report together. Um, so I'll jump back into the report. Um, I, I did mention the textile storage, and we we submitted the, um, the commenting for that. Um, so that's getting underway. As I mentioned, we just met with contractors who will submit bids for that. They are also on the citywide awards, and so hopefully that will happen quickly as a result of that. Um, 
the, as I mentioned, the survey for the Library Recreation and Culture Fund is going to be um, presented to City Council tomorrow. Um, and so we'll see how that goes in terms of their recommendations. Um, and then at the last meeting that I attended, I'll just put it that way, um, City Council voted uh, to award the money from the sale of the, um, the, the Broncos um, to city uh, to the city, children and family and so they'll make decisions about how that money gets distributed um, but then also awarded the oil and gas proceeds to the museum so um, i'll work hopefully i'll be figure this out before i leave um, to work with finance to figure out exactly how much money that is and make sure that it gets uh, um, appropriated to the cip for the expansion project. Um, the rest of this I'm reading for the first time, so you know, <laughs> let's just wing it. Um, in exhibits, the agriculture exhibition is really moving forward. This is going to open um, soon. Um, so, uh, Jared's been working um, to do the interpretation of the exhibit um, through the artist suite and farmer interviews. So, that's the next uh, fun project for them that they. Um, interview the folks that are involved in the project to be able to pull together the interpretation. Amanda McCabe, how do you pronounce it? Thank you. Um, she was in town from Toronto, and so um, the current installation is going to go to at the Agriculture Heritage Center. So you see a picture of that on the right hand side, that's the um, space that it's going to go into. And the left hand side is an example of her work. So basically, that work is going to go into that barn. Um, and so they uh, went to the barn to um, see how they might be able to pull that off. I think it's going to be really impressive. Um, Sarah Sense was also in town. She's from Sacramento, and she is an artist who works with um, uh, photos that are essentially woven together. So she'll take you know, two photos or maybe even more and basically um, weave those together. And so she was uh, here to be able to um, uh, figure out exactly what kind of photos she wanted to be to, to use in the work that she'll be doing. Um, she's an indigenous artist, so it's, be, it's great to be able to include her in the, in the project um, altogether. And then Patrick Merrill, who's a local um, artist but really nationally known, um, um, he's going to be part of the project and he was here gathering corn stalks. Um, that he's going to be using in the production of a 25 foot by 10 foot woven curtain um, that will be used in the um, exhibition. He is, um, if you go to the airport, you may see his work. He created um, they're enormous logs that are kind of in this V pattern that you see um, as you approach the, the airport. Um, and especially if you come in on the um, the train, you pass right by them. They're they're really quite cool. And that was a project that took him years and years and years to do. Um, so, so if you want to see the scene work, you can see it there. Um, we've also got six hands-on activities that are going to be included in the exhibition. And so really trying to make the um, exhibit that's going to be here in our galleries really um, active and, and um, sort of kid-friendly. Um, because typically we have a kids exhibit during that time frame, so we wanted to make sure that we sort of appeal to that audience during that time. Um, also, in the process of hiring a museum assistant, um, and, and really this is part of a uh, sort of um, uh, new, new museum professionals that we're trying to develop. Um, so this is the first round of um, uh, museum assistants that we'll be hiring. Um, that sort of stems from our intern program. Um, so it's really geared, geared towards new professionals. You may have seen as you walk in the, in the building that we've got a new Art and Public Places um, piece that's hanging out in, in the atrium. It's called Angel's Wings. Um, and so that is, as you see, a great photo of that. Um, it's really exciting to have that wall um, has been sort of a challenge for us to deal with on a regular basis. And so what we decided a year or so ago is that we were going to just dedicate that for our public places um, uh, loan program. And so that will change essentially on an annual rotation. Um, and so the museum 
pure toil staff won't necessarily have to program that space, but instead are in public places and deal with that. Is, is yeah. there a certain percentage of the art on the move that's outdoor and indoor? I, you know, I think for a long time it never occurred to me that there was indoor art on the move because I was so used to art in public places sure. being outside. I knew that. Yeah, Angela's done a really good job of sort of reconsidering this because um, the the limitation is that in order for it to be art in public places, it has to be um, accessible for free to the public, and and there are not a lot of indoor spaces that meet that criteria. Yet. And so we have a certain areas of the museum that are available free of charge, and those are the spaces that are available for art and public places. There are a couple of other places that she's programming um, in the Civic Center and in the, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, Safety and Justice, Safety and Safety Justice Center. Center. Um, and so those are the ones that she's now got on her slate that she's programming this um, uh, it for indoor spaces. I'm just, it, it really is Angela making a point of doing it. So it's kind of, it's new. Yeah. And this will be part of the rotation. Yeah. So 2D work that, I mean, it's also challenging because it's 2D work that gets loads of light. And that aspect of getting loads of light is problematic in terms of conservation of art. Um, and so it was definitely part of the conversation in choosing this piece. Um, that it had to be, everybody has to be fully aware of the length that it gets, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually love that piece. I think it's very cool. Um, we've got, in terms of the auditorium programming and the events and rentals, um, we're back in business. Um, in February, we had 24 events over 28 days, so that's a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, March is only slightly less busy with a grant over 23 museum programs, sponsored events, rentals, and city meetings. Um, the February highlights include the Greg Deal Tour Divorce One Man Show, with the, it's called the Punk Pan Indian Romantic Comedy. Um, we have solo dance performances by LA Samuelson and a new work created especially for the Long Island Museum. Um, sold out Friday afternoon concerts featuring Ben the Jazz Legend of Bernard Steen and Black Hands Masters. Um, on the Rise was an, an installation by the Songwriter Show Showcase. Um, this has become an annual event. I hope it, it stays one with Bonnie Taylor um, basically curating her Stay Not Show. March marks the return of the Boulder International Film Festival and the Mont 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 Motion Picture Orchestra. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to one of those, but they're really cool if you haven't had a chance. Um, basically, it's a uh, a film that is accompanied by live musicians and they're usually really pretty really cool. Um, and then we had Native American Poets on March 15th and the Sacred Art of the Powwow on March 30th. Um, and so really just a great lineup that has accompanied the, the Grand Deal exhibition. Um, and then by, by numbers we have 24 events, two community partners, over 1,200 people, um, revenue at 13,000 and ticket revenue, rental revenue at 13,000 and ticket revenue at 39. You can see the, the percentages there, so we're doing pretty good um, year to date. Um, we've got uh, school tours, we've got three lined up um, for the spring season. Um, this is something I think and maybe Susie can respond to this that sort of been slow in coming, getting people coming back for school tours, but I think that we'll be seeing a rise in that as well. Um, docents um, have been sort of few and far between. That it's been a challenge basically to be able to um, recruit for uh, docents, knowing that the school tours have been a little um, slow in coming back, so um, Anne's really trying to get a, get a handle on it. Um, the, the docents and being able to train docents um, uh, and you know, making sure that we, we honor their time appropriately. Summer, in summer camps, we've got 73 full scholarships that have been awarded so far. 
320 campers in the room so far. Um, we've got some that are full already, which is kind of expected. Um, I don't know if any of you deal with this, but basically for my kid, as soon as the camps open, the camps settle. So, you know, you have to be online, ASAP in order to get those. We've got great team volunteers um, lined up for, for those um, summer camps. Um, I feel like this is. Oh, I didn't even know this. See, first time I read this. Sam Van Aken, who's one of the artists um, for the agriculture exhibition, he is sent to a Colorado in the 1800s camp um, teaching a scientific process. I didn't know that. That's super cool. Sam's been really um, active because. He is also working with CU on um, this tree project that they have going on. So he, he has shown it up in Colorado um, periodically and we've been able to piggyback on that. So that's exciting to see that he's going to be able to do that for us. Um, I Can Dance is um, the Lama Museum is hosting the first program um, July 17th to the 21st. Um, so this is a special camp that pairs. Um, Experience and structures with children with disabilities to teach them dance. Um, what two volunteers are assigned to each dancer to serve as fathers, providing customized physical support, location, and encouragement throughout the week. And children can learn a choreographed routine and perform on stage on the last day. So that's going to be a really exciting sort of accessibility program that we've got going. Um, and of course, scholarships are available. Work. This is um, planning, the planning has begun for that, and so we're meeting with Randy again, who's helped um, coordinate the program for the last couple of years and really been able to help explain what we can do because it and has been doing it for a long of years, so being able to cover himself is great. Um, and then engaging again the committee that works on that. Fall, fall planning also is underway, and we're looking to um, be able to work on the agriculture. Uh, fall programming um, since the exhibit is going to be lasting through that time. And some of the things that we're going to be doing is composting, um, from com composting workshops and planning our painting and food fermentation. So, all of those things are going to be cool um, add adds to the exhibition. In terms of collection and what um, Eric's got going on, um, you all know we've got a new uh, collections management program, and so really transferring all of that data and making sure that the new um, proficio elements has been a massive um, undertaking and so it's it's much more powerful um, but also I think it's it's going to be um, interesting in terms of onboarding because it's not as uh, simple as past perfect and so um, being able to make sure that the volunteers have a great training on it will be essential um, and there's a, a lot of sort of enhanced um, archival cataloging that are part of that. Um, volunteers are learning the new software and making sure that we've got um, all of the cataloging that you guys um, are able to do for us and getting those new um, sessions into the system is great. Um, so you see all the things that we've got uh, lined up for the new sessions. Eric and Eileen also led tours for the Media Collection Center. Um, and so we have 18 members from the Game Club attend um, that tour. And so basically, um, what we wanted to be able to do is to have um, you know you guys and the kind of um, VIPs have a, a look at the space and then open it up for additional um, public programs. And I think that we'll then now continue those um, tours of the center. I think that people are excited to see the sort of behind the scenes stuff, and so that's why we have those available for us. Um, AIPP commissions one to two are on um, in for displays. Back to your question, Dale. Um, uh, to be presented um, in the atrium and in Sophia Justice. Kite Neighborhood Improvement Process Project um, has received a Neighborhood Grant Leaders Project um, of Excellence Award, which is really cool. And now they're about to be here for you. Oh, we'll see you. Thanks, Eric. Um, featured in the NGLA newsletter. Um, council member Sean McCoy has joined the AIPP council um, as council liaison. Um, 
the spoke mural, the second phase of the breezeway of the Walmart Housing Authority has begun and will be completed this month. Um, I think it's already completed, which is the reason I'm like, huh, what? Um, so the picture there that you see, I think he's already completed that. Um, and that is gonna be what I haven't seen and we'll, we'll have to share it with you when it becomes live, is that this mural is, um, you can scan a QR code and on your phone, it's activated. And I don't know what it's gonna do, but something will move. And so this is one of only two in the state. Um, and so this is gonna be really exciting that, we're, that um, yeah, you'll be able to use your phone and see something happen. Um, so that's gonna be cool. The, the mural, I think, is already done. So it's just a matter of um, adding the, the digital aspects to it that you really cool. Uh, moving on to visitor services, um, the store has um, seen increasing sales, and so um, $2,300 for the month of February. Um, grandparents um, are one of the best museum store customers, and so being able to gear up for some of those um, kid friendly things, I mean, uh, grandparents are here with their grandkids. Um, we had 74 new or renew renewed um, members in February. And then you can see the, att the attendance. Um, February, I mean, I'm sorry, January 22, uh, a little over a thousand. Um, and then January 23, um, up you see a bump at um, almost um, over uh, 1,200. Um, and then 22 February, um, we had 1,800, a little bit less um, in February 23. And then visitor services manager Elizabeth is hiring a new visitor service staff. We do have one new person that has already started who is, um, she's going to really think of her title. I'm not going to remember. Do you remember Heather's title? I can't remember either. Uh, Heather has been working with this in, at the front desk um, and she's now taken on a new role. And I can't remember the title of it, but it's something like visitor services um, assistant um, and that's a full-time benefited position. And so she starts to, um, and we'll have to replace our position at the front desk. So that's a role that has been vacated for a while. So um, it's really great to be able to have it both filled. And Elizabeth has really struggled. I think this is common that, especially for these part-time non-benefited position, there's sort of constant turnover. Um, so poor Elizabeth has been spending a lot of her time interviewing the, those jobs over and over and over again. So, for Elizabeth, um, it's kind of a thankless job. The city did bump up those uh, salaries because of that, but we're still having a lot of trouble filling those positions and keeping people in those positions. I already talked to you a little bit about prismatic consulting, um, and so um, uh, the, the first step is really that they're going to be pulling together with the donors. Um, for potential interviews and identifying stakeholders who might be interested in being on the steering committee. Um, Megan applied for a $50,000 grant from the Rose Community Foundation to help support the museum's equitable access program. So this is the program that helps with um, our scholarships uh, for camp and for the um, Discovery Days. Um, so this would be a big boost to be able to help that program. High Plains Bank has committed $2,500 to sponsor the summer concert series. Um, Billy Ferranti also has committed his support again. Um, so uh, likely similar to last year's $2,500 um, sponsorship for the summer concert series. So those are two um, good ones to see. Um, Meg has also talked to Smuckers about donating uncrustables for the summer camps um, and then uh, exploring other partnerships for peanut free options, they did this for us last year. So we saw kids eating a bunch of crustables at some camps last year, it was really wonderful. And then we've got, um, I think we mentioned this before, new uh, membership software as well, Boomerang. Um, and so that's expected to go live April the 6th, and it's really been um, 
I've, it's been a really great process working with them, troubleshooting the data transfer and troubleshooting all of the, the ways that we use the software. Um, Joanne and um, Eve Lacey, who um, has been on this board before, um, and is a long time uh, volunteer with the museum and really knows the database really well. Um, she's really been helpful in um, troubleshooting that, and so that's going to be great to improve uh, uh, that new software. The old software, what we had was also Past Perfect. So Past Perfect um, did WU for us. So it was the collections management software and it was also the donor database management. Um, and because Past Perfect is essentially going away and we had to find replacements for both of those, um, we chose Blue Marine for the, the membership and the donor um, software. And it's got a lot of new functionality. And so it's really good timing in terms of the um, the capital campaign um, because Megan will be able to really use that new program to its fullest advantage and be able to track uh, donor relationships and, and touch points and all of that. So this is really good timing for the new um, software uh, for that. In terms of marketing, we've got. Um, promotion in full swing for duality and I don't know if you guys have all been able to see that show and if you have it, please come back and spend some time in it because it's really an amazing exhibition and we're lucky to have it um, and so we've got uh, NPR spots and Westward and Times Hall and signage throughout town and so hopefully you've seen some of that and then we've got a promo video um, with uh, the Walmart Public Media and there's a link included there if you want to go check it out, it's really nice. Um, and then we've got a new Instagram account. We've talked about that before, uh, but it does give us an opportunity to be able to really share some of those um, visual things in, in a better way um, than we have been in the past. And then with volunteer and evaluation coordinator, we've got um, monthly up updates um, for the survey collection that we've been doing. Um, then we've got a draft volunteer manual underway, and then um, recruitment for team volunteers in for summer camp. And I think that's it. Any questions? It's a lot. Can I do it? Yeah, go ahead. the council campaign. Um, so it's going to be day. Yeah. Oh, that's or great. Or maybe in May or June. Yeah. And we just talk about the elements of that campaign. Yep. And what the steering committee is going to do. Yep. We can make sure that happens. Any other questions? What's the uh, process for your replacement? Great question that I obviously don't know the answer to at this point. I just had a meeting this morning with um, Jeff Friesner, who's the, the head of the department, and Joni um, Marsh, who's the, uh, the assistant city manager, um, who's the head of the division. Um, and so we'll talk more about what that's going to look like. What I really want to have happen in front of what we talked about this morning is I want there to be someone in place by the time the capital campaign goes live. Um, and I think that's totally doable. In May. Yeah. I'm hoping it'll happen way before that. Um, so that the. Yeah, the so it's like so we'll get mine through fellas. Well, I don't think that there's anybody in mind per se. Um, but certainly there are networks of people that we can share it with. Um, but ultimately, It'll be important, I think, to have somebody that is um, sort of, you know, the champion of the project and really out there as the, the one person in the lead. And I think it's totally doable. Yeah. I mean, it really is horrible timing for all of this to happen, but also a, an opportunity that I can sure. not take. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that Jeff and Joe are committed to, to making sure it happens too. Um, so I feel like it could, you know, there's a lot of momentum behind it, so I feel good about it. I mean, it's so exciting. I really am like, this is this is terrible timing. This, this stuff is like, you know.
a director's dream. But it'll be the next director's dream too. So, yeah. Any other questions for me? We'll be sure to keep you guys in the loop about what happens tomorrow with the state council meeting and what that will mean. Um, I think probably it'll kind of jive with the um, launch of the capital campaign as well, um, especially when it comes to those talking points and um, sort of how to be ambassadors for the museum. Is there a date certain when we would hear about the brand of the people? That is supposed to happen in uh, April. I know it's in April, but I wondered if it was early April or late April or... Oh. Off the top of my head, Dale, I think it's the 15th that we're supposed to hear. But don't pull on us that day of April. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, is the 15th of Saturday? Yeah, I think so. The 15th, because um, what Megan has been saying is that it's weird that they would have said it was on a Saturday and she hopes that we hear it before that date. Yeah, so that's the date they announced. But since it's a Saturday, it's likely that it'll either be the Friday before or the Monday after. Yeah. Anything else for me? I really am serious and sincere when I say just because I'm leaving doesn't mean I don't care about this place. I really, really do. And I want you all to, to feel free to connect with me on my personal email if you've got any questions or if I can help in any way or if you just want to talk or whatever. I really, I, I want you to know that I'm sincere about that. I care about this place a lot and I am, there's a lot of me that is super, super sad about leaving, especially right now. So um, please, please take that seriously. Okay, that's in my report. We'll miss you. Working with you, Thank and you. congratulations Thank on you. your exciting new adventure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. When is your last day? The 31st. The 31st. There's no going back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've signed a lot of paperwork. I don't think there's any going back. <laughs> All right, uh, report of the chair is next. I do not have a report. Um, and so we move on to unfinished business. Does anyone have any unfinished business? I cannot recall anything from the January meeting. All right, any new business? Okay, uh, any board comments? Other than we will miss you. <laughs> All right, we have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Nobody wants to adjourn. <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Linda. All right, all in favor? All right. All right, that is unanimous. We are adjourned.